like to speak about the role of the spiritual warrior, which is an aspect of the self. something that is explained in detail in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, is that after the body passes, there can be this period of embracing the light and the beauty. But in the aftermath, what will arise are all the demons that have been unmet in the life. And if the demons are recognized to be unreal, to not really have the ability to affect anything, then one is freed. Then completion has occurred and there is liberation. The awakening process when the body is still functioning is the same. It is not possible to bypass the conditioned mind's idea of the demons. And be completely liberated. The beauty is that in the wisdom of the way in which all of this is offered, typically this is quite a gradual process. Before such a thing is faced, there is a very deep recognition that the nature of your being, which is always now, in which there is no past or future, for the flavor is unchanging, that the flavor of this is not affected by anything that comes or goes. Yet at times the comings and goings can present great intensity. But the intensity that is presented is presented to the ego. The intensity is never presented to the very nature of your existence. Your existence is not in time. It is not defined by a location. The nature of which is pure light. And then there are the varying experiences which arise in the egoic habit, which is defined by emotional sensory experience of the body.
often there is not a lot of activity happening and the taste is quite effortless. And then there are times of great activity. When there is great activity, and it is in the nature of what the conditioned egoic mind fears, there is an ensuing battle that goes on where mind is either trying to get away from trying to condemn trying to wall off what it perceives as the demon for most as you get closer to the possibility of true freedom, the ante will be upped. Things will arise at times that the mind says, I cannot do, I cannot take, I cannot bear, at times. And all the while there is a recognition that nothing can touch your nature. When the intensity comes down the pike, it is usually in the one that has rested in your nature deeply enough that the knowingness is unshakable. And yet there are these periods of time where the body reference point is on fire and the mind is wanting to get the hell out of there. And until there is complete grounding in the nature of your being, it will be experienced as the greatest possible challenge. But you cannot discover the myth that I am the body all the way through if there is not the facing of this type of meeting all the way through. You cannot discover that body is mind's creation until you are ready to stay with it until it is all the way through. A window into seeing the nature of how this works when something is seen all the way through is in fasting. We are always given the grace of these windows to see. In fasting, in the beginning the body gets very hungry, it gets very weak. If there was no knowing about the nature of fasting, great fear would arise and one would begin to eat out of this idea that I am hurting myself. But in the staying with the process, eventually the hunger falls away. The fatigue falls away and there is a greater sense of clarity. The mind's story the mind's story is that it is because the body is cleaner But the deeper reality is an aspect of conditioned entrapment has been worked all the way through. And in working all the way through, what happens is it disappears. And in its disappearance, there is a deeper connection with yourself. This is the nature 
with every single thing that the body-mind faces in the mature one who is ready to sit through it. And it will come at some point along the journey for every player. It can take days in fasting before the sense of fatigue, hunger, lift. It can be the same with this. If one is busy trying to break through to the other end, they are not meeting anything. Just as has been offered in the teachings of the Tibetan Book of the Dead, it is only when you realize that the demon is imaginary and thus it is welcomed all the way in and not feared that you see the illusory nature of it. When these intense waves arise in the one who is very mature, because there is very deep maturity before such a process happens, each time something is met all the way through, staying with it until the process is complete, an aspect that perhaps creates intermittent identification with the body based on the playing circumstances is permanently released. It is like the hunger in fasting where did the hunger go when it has been worked through all the way? You just cannot find it. This is what happens in relationship with body. As many of you know, this is no small feat. There are many who are addressing this dynamic. It's why it is being spoken of at this time. Everyone has felt times of bodily intensity. But the grace is your nature is known very, very well. the nature of your being, of your heart, which is not contained, which does not arise out of a point of reference, which is unbounded. Which is eternally present now. And then there is the amnesia. And the amnesia was built out of the human apparent dilemma of separation, dynamics of human suffering. And the release from the body meets that intensity. It is just like childbirth, but it is birthing yourself. Childbirth is considered to be perhaps the most intense physical experience. The release from the body is the same. Birthing yourself is the same. 
if it is an intermittent relationship, there will be an experience for such a prolonged time of intensity. When the readiness is ripe, you go into labor. When you realize nothing can touch you, no matter what the experience, once the fear of it relaxes, which will happen eventually, it will disappear like smoke. What takes a level of fortitude like this is what is called the spiritual warrior. The one that will not run. the one whose connection with truth is deep enough that there is a readiness to meet the demon in a knowingness that there is no demon. It is the fabrication of egoic mind. This is not about the future, it's about now. It is being pointed to because of a recognition of quite a number that are dealing with a level of this. In subtler ways, everybody deals with it intermittently. The intermittent dealings with it are preparation. When it is challenging and the body wants to run and running happens, the preparation cannot do its work. The thing about the true spiritual warrior is it's not a doing. It's just not a running. It cannot fail because it is the true nature of your being. But it requires the willingness to meet what the conditioned egoic mind has feared. Every time something like this arises in the play, it is an opportunity which strengthens something that readies you for your own birth, to midwife yourself. in saying that once it is seen all the way through, it is finished. It does not mean that the dynamics do not reappear. But the fear of it is gone. There is a recognition of what it is, and it no longer holds power. Just like one who goes into a fast after being used to fasting, It does not bring up a great sense of fear. There is a recognition of what is required.
in learning to receive the opening into who you are that is free of the comings and goings becomes more and more and more deeply rooted. What can sweep the attention loses its power in a deeper and deeper way. Each time something like this arises, it deepens the taste of liberation. It intensifies a type of confidence of the ability to meet anything. It wipes clean the story of what it's all about and who it's affecting. It frees the habit of living out of a point of reference. And it opens you more deeply into your eternal nature. A flavor of the self is what is called the spiritual warrior, for the self is unmoving. And when the illusion is welcomed in, it cannot survive. 